in and out. One closing done in like um, under 10 minutes. And um, I'm here at the Clayton office. The buyer went to the Olive office. And that's the office they told me I had to go to at first. But I'm like, no, I have another closing here at 2. So we just did both of them. The attorney that I normally work with, he just did, is going to do both of my closings. So I'll get up with the buyer later on to make sure he gets the keys and everything. So um, now I'm back at home. I can actually uh, sit and talk about we had two closings um, on on one day, which is pretty cool. Uh, one, I actually had to bring money to the table and the other one was nice because I was receiving money. The, um, the wire should be hitting the title company today and I should be able to go pick up the check. But I'll break down both of them uh, briefly. This is a vlog, so I'm not going to dive too deep in it. Maybe in a future video, I'll dive deeper into it. But um but yeah, so the first one was converting a lease option tenant buyer over to owner financing. So, um, so this is someone she's on the pathway to home ownership um, and going out and getting bank financing right now is not something that she really wanted to do. So we had other options. So if you're presented with this situation as well, you can either um, extend their lease another year and allow them to continue to work to get themselves bankable or else you can actually finance them. So that's the option we chose. She should have the house paid off in seven years. Um, however, at the 50%, once her note matures uh, 50%, she has 50% equity in the property. Um, I let her know that, hey, we'll transfer it over to you and we will um, secure it with a deed of trust and a promissory note to spell out all of the terms. And uh, you'll just continue making your payments like you normally make, but the deed will actually be in your name. And, and that gives them another um they're another step closer to home ownership they take such pride when when that deed is actually in their name and she's gotten to do all of this without having to go to the bank so i'm excited for her. i told her i'm right here i just look at it like a partner and um i'm helping her get to the finish line so some of the some of the documents that were involved in that transaction the lease option to the um to the owner finance was, of course, the general warranty deed. What else do we have? Then you have your actual land sales installment contract. Again, this is going to spell out all of the details, all of the terms, the price, what's included with the sale, the expectations, late charges, um, who, who's going to be collecting. Uh, we, we have a third party note servicing company that actually collects the PITI, which is principal interest, um, taxes, and insurance, all of that will be collected by a third-party company. And everything should be spelled out in your uh, in your contract, which was drawn up by the attorney. So that's, a, that's the second document. Next is going to be the actual amortization schedule. So this shows, um, it gives her a breakdown of her principal and interest, every payment that she makes, how much is going toward interest and how much is going toward principal. And we know at the beginning it's very heavy on the interest side, but as she pays more and more, um, more, more of her payment will go toward the actual paying down the principal. Excuse the kids in the background, it's real. It's COVID time, the whole family is home, so you may hear my one-year-old or my three-year-old just blurred out. But I'm going to keep the video rolling. <laughs> um, the next is the next is the supplemental escrow instruction. So this is a breakdown that I send over to the note servicing company with how much is going to a principal, how much is going to an interest, how much the taxes are, and um, and and the note servicing fee, and how much the insurance is. So we both sign that and. Um, I'm actually going to send that over to them today. Next is a resource and responsibility sheet. So this sheet is, um, I, I gather all of the different utility companies here in St. Louis, Missouri. I get the number, I get the email address, um, I, I get the website. This way they can have it right there. They can know um, this is my responsibility. Here in St. Louis, um, that the MSD, the sewer, that's a leanable 
utility. So if that's not paid, then that um, then they can place a lien on your property. So I'll still be notified of that. That's still in my name since the deed is still with me right now. But um, but that's her responsibility. So she's able to receive a, a bill, and then I'm able to receive a duplicate bill, just knowing that it's paid every month. And I even had. The attorney draw up to where, hey, if I have to pay anything on this, then that's going to have to be paid before this deed can be transferred over to you. So this is another resource I like to give tenant buyers or or someone who's going to be um, purchasing the property via owner financing. And that's about it on the... Um, on the conversion, that one was simple. Her and I, we already have a relationship. Um, she, she's been a tenant buyer for a year, and now we're just taking a step closer toward owner financing. So if you have any questions about that whole process, that should all be done with an attorney. It shouldn't be just some over-the-counter type of transaction, but I would definitely recommend you to have an attorney with that. Also, to have a third-party note servicing company service that note because you never know you may want to liquidate that note and you should be in contact with note buyers as well to sort of find out their criteria but they do like um you know it's going to be based off of the cash flow um how, how much that note is generating and what you know the, the area that it's in if it's going to be a, a safe note something safe for them to invest in but find find out what their criteria is and sort of try to structure your notes around that because let's say one day you may have to liquidate that note and uh, and sell it off for cash. So it, it's good to just know that you're being compliant with some of your note buyers as well. So that's it for that. Now we're going to hop into the next transaction that we did, which was actually a sale. So this property, it was sort of a win and a lose. It was kind of messy. Um, the way we acquired it, I would never, ever, ever um, advise anyone to acquire the property the way that we acquired it. And that's via a quick claim deed. And with the quick claim deed, you're literally just quitting any claims to the property. However, <laughs> if there's liens attached to their property or anything like that, that buyer, they're taking on that now. And we took on some of those. Uh, we knew about some of them, but there were some that slipped through the cracks. Luckily, we got it for dirt, dirt cheap. Um, because the, the seller, she, she just needed out. She needed someone that can come in, you know, get the property from her, get some of these liens off of her, get the taxes caught up. And we were able to do just that. But, um, but yeah, I would never advise anyone to purchase a property via a quick claim deed. The title company will, will never, um, ensure that um, the title, if it's transferred via a quick claim deed, they want a general warranty deed, which is the way that we sold it off because we don't want any legal issues. Um, you know, if, if, if there was liens that, that the new buyer didn't know about, and that's just sort of a principle of us, of our, of the way we do business is we're going to sell it off, going through a title company, getting title insurance. Both parties are, um, both parties are, are protected for a quick claim deed. That's very common, like if you're transferring property, um, transferring property amongst family members or whatever. I, I've done that. You know, my aunt, she's transferred things to me uh, via a quick claim deed. But, you know, when you're going out doing business with people who you don't know, um, it's best to just go through a title company or an attorney, get insurance on the title, get them a general warranty deed. That way that they know that no one else has any claim to this property. So some of the things that did slip through the cracks were... Um, <laughs> We we knew about MSD, which is our sewer, but but the water and trash, which which it wasn't much, but um, but that slipped through the cracks as well as St. Louis City Forestry, which wasn't a lot, but um, but yeah, things like that are going to come out of your proceeds when you're selling the property, as well as the taxes are going to be prorated, as well as any water or trash that you paid. So that's all going to be prorated. This one we. Um, we got it for really cheap. We got it for about um, whatever were her taxes is the cash that we came up front with. Um, I think it was around 1300 bucks. And then the deal was just to take it subject to any of the other liens that she had on the property. A lot of people um, only associate subject to with it being subject to an underlying mortgage, but it can be subject to any other lien. Um, you can 
take over the deed. You can transfer the deed of a property and you can keep any other liens or financing in place. So we kept all of the liens in place. I didn't assume anything. I just let them know that I'll be paying on her behalf. Um, and that's what we did until we were able to get the property sold and, um, and then pay everything off in full. So it was cool. You know, the neighborhood, and we actually had two exit strategies for this property. So one, and I, I wasn't too happy about holding the property over there and, and, and uh, work, working with the tenant base over in this neighborhood. So we were going to own or finance it, which we had a gentleman. He already put his application in, but he put it in right after I got the contract back from the cash buy. So we had our property and we listed it for owner financing and we listed it for cash. So the cash price was $21,000 and then our owner finance price was $49,000 over an eight to 10 year window, $2,500 down um, at 8% interest. So their payment should have came in well under $700. So that's cheaper than, than the rent is over in that neighborhood. And we're owner financing. They're actually paying down their principal and interest every year, um, every month that they make a payment. So that is what we were presented with. To either hold off and wait to collect our money over the years, or else to um, let's just go ahead and get the cash now and then keep it moving. And we we both elected to just go ahead and get the cash now. But owner financing is great. It's all just where you are in your investing career. Um, do you want to get cash or do you want to build wealth and, and build streams of income? So we we just chose the cash. Who, who knows? Maybe the next one will be something that we actually hold. But some reasons that we chose the cash were. As I mentioned, there were liens on the property, so it must be a loan was like over three thousand dollars. So um, the twenty five hundred dollars down payment, I, I let my partner know, hey, any down payment that we get is going straight towards paying some of these liens down, and even twenty five hundred dollars wouldn't have paid the entire MSD lien. So we would have had to use a monthly income to continue to pay on it, and we haven't really seen the profit yet. And who knows? Um, even though someone is owner financing or they're they're a tenant buyer. Um, even though they, they, it is a different class of tenant that, that you're working with because it's a property that they're looking to own. Sometimes they can pose problems as well. So, um, so just knowing that, man, we got liens that will head off and, and it's going to be months before we, um, it's going to be months before we actually see the profit. Um, we just elected to do the cash and get that stuff paid off and, and then go ahead and pocket whatever's left. So right now, um, we're looking to work with some hard money lenders to do an actual renovation in, in some better neighborhoods that have higher ARVs, ARVs after repair value of at least more than $100,000 and not so much a marginal neighborhood, but neighborhoods where homeowners are actually looking to move. This neighborhood, homeowners aren't really looking to move there. It's more of a rental neighborhood. Um, However, in order to get to some of those other neighborhoods, we're going to need access to capital. So we are probably going to be working with some hard money lenders. And most hard money lenders want you to have 10 to 15 K season in an account for, um, for, for at least three months. So we know at least 10,000, we're just going to let sit in that account. We're going to pay back some of the lowest credit card and uh, we'll, we'll probably put some. Uh, no, we definitely will put some aside for taxes. And if anything is left over, we can play around with that. But we have to take care of those priorities first. So that's what it is, man. Two, two closings in one day. It was nice. Um, so you'll you'll get your um, you'll, you'll get your settlement statement. Whenever you're closing out a deal like this, the general warranty deed went to the seller. Um, we also did a special and trustee assessment statement, um, a statement to make sure that I am who I am, tax disclosure. Um, they have you sign things to make sure that you know that you haven't done anything to affect um, the the survey of the property. Um, a bunch of things to protect themselves. Uh, yeah, search survey affidavit, trustee assessments. 
disbursement request how how do you want to receive your money affidavit to to judgment so as you see you have to sign a lot of affidavits however with this one i was in and out actually they sent me to the clayton office because i had two closings there and they sent my buyer to our olive office which I, I didn't know but as you can see these title companies can be very nimble they can be very flexible we were able to get the deal done um i, I called the the buyer afterwards just extending letting him know like hey if you need something i'm here i left the keys for you here at the clayton office because i thought you were coming here um the utilities i'll go ahead and give you seven days before before i turn anything off adt security i i you know um, let's go ahead and get you a code created. This way you can get in and out of the building until I've, um, I've turned off those services or it's transferred it to a different property. So my my goal is to, to get this lockbox working again. If, the, is it, if this lockbox, if this lockbox is sitting on my desk, that means that it's not out working. That means that I'm not dispoing a property right now. I haven't even acquired the next property right now. So, um, so yeah. That's the goal to, to get this lockbox out working. If you guys have any questions, um, you can drop them in the comments section. I'm no guru, I'm no coach. Uh, I've just done a couple um, a couple of deals. I'm looking to grow my um, my real estate business. So for all of those real experienced creative guys, flippers, um, if you have any advice, please drop it in the comments as well. But, um, but yeah, this is it. Thanks again for checking out my channel. And until next time, peace.